Hello, everyone. It's are we pumped? Are we are we listening? <laughs> yes. Okay, I see some people clapping. Um, it's another beautiful day in quarantine. Um, it's getting hot in here. I got a fire going on, and uh, <laughs> it is a fireside chat. I had to have the fire background, and I needed to make Jen laugh. That's part of my job here. Um, but super, super excited to have Jen DeSilvio <laughs> in the house. Everybody, round of applause for Jen taking some time out in the middle of a production that she's a little bit stressed about. Uh, still here for us, which we so appreciate. Um, uh, for those that don't know Jen DeSilvio, I think you all do, but a Grammy and Brit nominated songwriter and producer, Ashford and Simpson Songwriters Award for the Multi-Platinum Rise Up by Andra Day, Brit Award nomination for Anne Marie's breakout album, Speak Your Mind. Um, credits from everyone from Beth Ditto to Ben Platt to Fletcher to Demi Lovato. In fact, I think I did a slide here. I did check out these songs <laughs> that Jen is responsible for. Um, Thanks, Terry. Thank you. Know about, I did not know about the Demi Lovato. That's a new, that's a, a new, um, development well probably not to you but to me it's a, a new development i'm sure there's lots of new developments that i haven't told you about yeah, but. I know, but so that then you just have to tell us those that's what today <laughs> should i just tell you when things happen <laughs> yeah all the time like can you i don't know how much you can say can you say what you're working on right now yeah. <laughs> this is what i thought if you can then Go for it, but maybe you can't. So we'll leave it at Demi Lovato. <laughs> I mean, I guess I could talk about a little bit of the stuff I'm doing, but um, That's I obviously, I obviously work a lot with Fletcher still, um, and Anne Marie, and some new stuff coming with. Uh, those are, I think I'm I'm doing writing and production actually for both, doing a Cherry Glazer song. Do you know them? You know, one of our former interns and a album I did for a band she used to be in, I think she's a bass player now in Cherry Glitch. She actually, yeah, she is a recording engineer who works with us sometimes up here too. Would have been nice to know if, so I didn't have to hire somebody to do the bass virtually. That would have been nice. Sammy's an awesome bass player. You got to get Sammy involved. Sammy's awesome. Okay. Well, well, Terry, you should have told me, and I guess I should have told you. No, because you didn't tell me so that I could tell you. <laughs> so. Anyway, well, sorry. Reflecting that one, 100%. Um, I am going to, God, the, the questions are already kind of piled in here, but I'm going to start, I think, with the question that everybody asks, which is, um, what's your opinion on what makes a song a hit? Like, what do you think makes a hit song? Um, I, you know, that's a great question. Um, you mean as a listener, what do I think makes a hit song or as a creator? As a creator. Well, both actually, but I think more of, as a creator, like what do you think is, well, what, let's just say, what do you think you're putting into these songs that's making them a hit? What's feeling? Song? It's gotta be feeling. I think okay. like, I, I mean, at the end of the day, like we all just like certain kinds of things. I mean, Ed Sheeran is massive for a certain reason. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who turn him off when he comes on too. Right. But I think he strikes a chord that's pretty universal for the most part. <laughs> um, but I think, I don't know when I'm, when I'm writing, I kind of don't really think about it. And then I start to think about it later. Is that a bad answer? No, that's what most people say is they don't think about it until after. So, but then that leads me to after you've created this thing and you're working with the artist on it, what are the indicators to you that like, okay, this one's, this is, you know, out of this batch of songs, this one's going to be the hit. Um, what kind of hit though, too? Do you know what I mean? Because like Rise Up's really different than a Demi Lovato hit. Well, let's you know just... Any hit. I think most people just want to know how can I create any hit, right? Any hit. I don't think they're going to be picky. 
I don't, I think, I think creating, I think there's something universal about every song. I think something that draws you in to people, obviously the song has to be incredible, but like, so is the vocal performance too. Like, and so are the sounds that you choose to sculpt around, around it. Like I was talking to Fletcher actually the other day, cause we're working on this one song. We were deciding like, should we strip it back or should we put the drums in it? And she's like, I don't know if the song should have drums. And I said, look, it's a choice. You don't have to put drums in if you don't want to put drums in, but it's totally up to you. I was like, and then I, I said, I gave her an example. Um, you're going to laugh at me, but I was like, Never mind, I'll find someone like you. And I, and I was like, that song doesn't need drums, right? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, exactly. So you just choose. But I think if you did a drum and bass, you know, remix of someone like you, it probably wouldn't be as much of a hit. Or maybe it would. I don't know. I have no idea. No, you do. My answer is I don't know. <laughs> well, I think... You do know, which points to intuition and other things, but that's the question, you know, that's the million dollar question that everybody asks. So I always want to get people's opinion on that. Um, and or a $5 million question, depending on. Yeah, I, or billion, whatever you want to, however many dollar signs you want to put it on there, which leads me, ironically, I wasn't going to ask you this, but somebody already asked this. Um, oh no, Terry, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> the question. I'm going off script. Um, somebody asked it, and I was kind of going to see if you went there, but um, how how you went from the unlikely finance degree to songwriting? Well, I don't think it. everybody. I don't know. Single them out right now. I want to know. I don't actually. I don't, it was up. There's a lot coming in, so I'm just kind of moderating. Okay, it. it's all right. Don't. It's fine. They said. Um, prefaced it with it's a weird question but how did Jen go from a finance degree to being a music producer or did the finance degree come later no it definitely came first you know, I know the answer but I think you know it might be interesting for people to hear like chasing your dream and look what happened kind of yeah thing. I think I was 21 years old I just graduated college Lehigh University Bethlehem Pennsylvania although I don't know if you guys know this about me but or I don't know if you know this about me, Terry, but I was on a soccer team. I played D1 too. No, I did not know that. Mm. And when I was younger, I used to run track and I was really fast and I was a striker in college. Anyway, so sorry. Many, Jen, so many, soccer, finance, music producer, songwriter, I don't know. Yeah, I should, uh, yeah. Anyway, so I was trying to make a joke. It wasn't gonna happen. Um, but yeah, no, and I was, I studied finance and then I got a job um, at the World Financial Center in uh, New York City, uh, working for Deloitte, doing post-deal valuation, which is basically discounted cash flow models, re remodeling investment bankers models for goodwill impairment testing. Basically just making sure whatever people paid for a company was the correct or it was over, under, or correctly priced. Anyway. So 9-11 had happened um, in 2001, right? And in, when I graduated college in 2006, they still hadn't, they still hadn't fixed um, the hole in the World Trade Center. And the path, because I'm from Jersey, as you can tell by my um, <clears throat> very lovely aesthetic and clean mouth that hasn't become dirty yet, um, but there was still the hole. And so like every day that I'd come in through the path train around the World Trade Center hole. And I just, I remember reading Deepak Chopra and I was like super depressed because I didn't like finance. And I just quit. I always wanted to be in music. I was a piano player since I was 16. And I guess maybe the turning point was Sorry, this is like a long-winded question, but the turning point was when I was sitting outside with this guy named Rajesh, and he was, I think he was from India, he was like a PhD student, and he was asking me what I felt about the foreign exchange rates of the rupee against the dollar, and how he was going to make so much money, and he was so excited about trading um, the currencies, and I just thought, I don't care. <laughs> And I thought like, I will never be as passionate about money as you are. Cause I think, 
I think the bottom line is like whatever you do, whether you're an astronaut or a teacher or a songwriter or a stockbroker, like if you love it, it's never going to feel like work. And every day going around that hole in the World Trade Center where it used to be, I always dreaded going to work. I didn't want to do it anymore. So that's my answer. Final answer. No, I like it. I love it. And the people, everyone's inspired by this. So it was not a long answer because people are like, wow. And they said, preach girl. So, you know, once that's said, you know, you're on the right track. Um, I was kind of pointing it out to folks that are like, how do I do that? You know, how do I chase my passion here. So you're kind of a great example of that. Um, so I'm going to switch gears now into your songwriting process. Like, is there a process or is it just whatever, wherever intuition takes you or are you always music first, lyrics second? You know, do you have a set process? Um, no. <laughs> everybody says that, but everybody asks it too. So I'm asking it. So <laughs> no. Well, I think what's kind of cool about that question is because I thought about it and I was when you sent it to me the other day and I just when I, I would say to you when I was younger and like alone creating I didn't I was like I have to start on piano piano and then comes the lyric and melody like that was my my OG like process and then because I was scared. I was scared, like, would I lose who I, who I am if I started my melodies, for instance, over a drum beat? Or, like, obviously, like, if you have, like, a funky bass line, you're not going to sing a Regina Spector song over it. But maybe that's what would make it dope. So it's all about, like, feeling comfortable with whatever you're given and just kind of daring to suck in it. And like, you'll know if it sucks. You'll know if like when you're singing something over a drum beat, if you don't like it. But um, so to answer your question, lyrics kind of just happen. They kind of come through with the melody and then I kind of catch it. It just is subconscious. Like right now, I don't even know what I'm about to say. It's just happening. I mean, I'm kind of thinking about it, but like, I don't really know. <laughs> um, and then you just kind of like harness it and go. Tom Petty said, he's, there was this quote he said, I could, maybe I hope it was quoted, but he was basically like, the like, the spark of it happens in two seconds or it takes two minutes or something like that. And then it's all about like, how do you, how do you make it into something? But that like, whoosh, is kind of instantaneous, which could come from a drum groove, which could come, I, I started a song the other day virtually with this kid who played guitar and I gave him this like funk beat and he put this like um, Devander Banhart kind of strumming pattern on it and it was so sick. And I would, you would, he would, the reason why it was cool was because it was completely, they shouldn't go together, but it was cool. <laughs> Happy accident. We love those. Um, this next one is kind of piggybacking on that. Do you write, and somebody's asking, I'll get into what everybody's asking after this <clears throat> but do you write specifically for the artist that you're working with or do you write a bunch of songs and they pick or how do, what does that look like when you are working with an artist um it's different every time you know it's it's funny you know what's crazy it's crazy that you're asking me this stuff because like if i really think back to I mean, obviously, Terry, your questions are great, and I think you're funny sometimes, but um, <laughs> I'm, fine. I'm just kidding. Sorry. Terry, what the heck? <laughs> um, when I first, like, because it's, it's a crazy thought, like, I'm going to quit my job and be in music, or forget about the fact that I even had a job. I want to be in music, right? I remember when I was like 14 years old and I watched Alicia Keys. I think that's when Fallen came out and Nelly Furtado on Like a Bird. And I remember those were the first two like pop songs that I was like, I really like these. These are really cool. What is happening? Like, wh why do I want to pay attention to this and, and study it and all this stuff? 
But the idea of working in music was ridiculous. It was a ridiculous notion. Like how the, how the hell are you gonna actually, you hear about it, you hear, oh, this person's a songwriter, this person is an actress, it's whatever. Because it seems really difficult to do. And it is, but it's not if you want to do it. Like if you really want to, it's kind of like a really like elitist club. It's like hard to get into. And then once you're in it, it's kind of like, you're like, oh. So you should be talented, obviously, or have a little bit of it and refine it. I'm not the best singer. My uncle told me to shut up. Maybe I was singing a song, I was writing it. And he was literally like, can you shut up, shut up. And I was thinking to myself, thank God I don't want to be a singer because like you just totally made me feel like I suck. But I was like, good thing I don't have to sing these songs for everybody. But sorry, I'm doing, I'm answering your question in a roundabout way. Writing with your, your question is a great question because it seems like the idea of getting into the music business is really hard. It also seems like how do you maneuver once you get into it? How do you work? How do you get in the room with an artist? How do you get your song to an artist? All of these things are, if you think about it, like really hard things to do as an outsider who isn't in it. But like anything else, artists, as Gaga just told everybody, are real people and just like me and you. Um, but they, you know, I haven't worked with Ariana Grande, but I'm pretty sure she'd probably want to have a conversation if I had the opportunity to work with her, have a conversation with me and tell me what she's looking for. If she was looking for me to give her something, or she'd probably say, let's hang out in a room and I'd probably start playing stuff and we would just vibe out. Or she would be like, I don't want to talk to you. This is what I want. Send it to my people. Every, everybody has a different way of going about it. I personally like to work with artists that want me in the room. I don't, I think that the kinds of artists that I am more drawn to tend to have a world around them that's more unique for the most part. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love hits and I love being part of hits, but um, I also like having integrity with them too. I don't, I don't like like cheap, cheap pop music. <laughs> These are great answers, and you're actually answering multiple things at the same time, which is helpful to me. That's because I'm really special. Yeah, you are. You are really special. That's why you're here. That's yeah. why you're here, right? Um, they are it's a lot of lot. I don't know if you can go into any more detail. There's a lot of questions on just that first placement like how you get that first connection to an artist that picks your song because obviously it's like you don't email them but um you know what was the hustle like to get that first connection? But honestly though like if somebody blind emailed me and I liked what I listened to I would hit them back okay well then then is that an, is that an option people need to know the people are asking I mean if somebody puts their email on their Instagram I would totally, I would take advantage of that. I do take advantage of that. I need, I need to get in touch with Diplo. So should I just, I'm, I'll figure it out. I'll find somebody who knows him, you know, but I mean, I don't really need to, if I, if I needed to get in touch with Diplo. Um, first placement, thought it was going to change my life. Thought I was going to become really rich, all that stuff. Nothing happened. <laughs> Nothing of the sort. Um, and after it happened, I realized, oh my gosh, I have so much more work to do. I have so much more that I don't know. I need to learn. I need to learn how to like exist socially within music. I need, I don't, I'm kind of, I think, I mean, I think at the end of the day, like writing songs and producing music is incredible, but I, as producers and writers, if we're working with artists, we're there to help them make their vision, execute their vision better and bring it to life and exceed all their wildest expectations. And those, those, um, now I don't talk about songs like I have cuts, you know, like I don't, 
I don't, I know it matters, but ultimately, like, I think it's a bigger narrative of like, what kind of aesthetic does, do I, does Jen want to um, represent? When you think of, when you think of Ryan Tedder, you think of certain things about him. When you think of Linda, you think of Perry, you think about certain things about Linda. When you think about Stevie Wonder, you know, Bruce Springsteen, um, I'm not an artist like that, but everybody has like a world around them. And I think like that's like the Ashford and Simpson award that Andrew and I won um, the, for Rise Up. Ashford and Simpson were incredible songwriters. They have a whole world around them, right? Yes. Right, and, and I think what's interesting for, for me is that because I dip into different worlds so much, like working with Natasha of Afro Lashes or Beth Ditto or Anne Marie and or Demi Lovato or Albert Hammond Jr. of The Strokes or Heinz, they're all so wildly different. And it doesn't, I think if I were more of like an artist songwriter, meaning like I just write it and give it to people, it would be like a whole different thing. I feel like my whole I guess like MO is like helping those that have an idea of what they're looking for, make it better. So I don't know where I'm going with this tangent, but um, cuts now, <clears throat> um, it's not about cuts, it's about art. So that's the answer to why I just talked for 10 minutes about bullshit. But basically when I got my first cut, I thought it was gonna change my life and nothing happened. Okay. First, it's not bullshit. Second, they're loving it. So I'm not, I wouldn't get, don't label it bullshit. All right. Sorry. Sorry. They're like, they're like, they're like yes, please. Um, which leads me to this other, because you went there. So I'm just going partially where you already went. Um, so you, you talked about I heard another interview with you about how, and you just said you played piano every day. Um, you probably got your 10,000 hours from playing piano like every day, right? Mm -hmm. After school. Mm -hmm. um, because folks are always asking like how much musical, you know, talent or, or experience do you need to be a songwriter? And I'm just wondering what your opinion is since you, how did that 10,000 hours of piano playing inform you as a songwriter? How is, has it been like super important or what, what's your opinion on that? Yeah, I think it, I think it is important. I also think that other people find other instruments to be their uh, third arm in terms of creativity. So like if I play some stuff on the piano, it's going to inform my, how I'm feeling like a, a, a melody, which would probably be laced with a lyric, but some people are whizzes on guitar and that helps them write and that informs different melodies. Some people can start off of, if they're a drummer, Phil Collins. Some people use Pro Tools, Sean Everett. Like, you know, there's, there, there, the instrument helps you write better or I, I, I don't know if better is the right word, but it helps. Like Bob Dylan played guitar a lot, right? It's his, it's a unique style. Joni Mitchell, same thing. Um, uh, I would recommend playing an instrument if you want to work in music, <laughs> but you don't need to do it. Like, you know, I don't think, um, I could be wrong and I feel like an asshole if I'm wrong, but remember Esther Dean, she did all that really great stuff with like Rihanna and Nicki Minaj, that boom, ba -doom, boom, boom, ba -doom, boom, 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 bomb so sick right yes. I don't think she plays anything she's amazing so yeah that's, her, you know she plays her drum machine a lot have you have you have you hung out with her no but I've, her? Seen her. I've definitely I've been in the same studio when she's been in that studio and she I just no, noticed that it was all drum machine like I think her instrument is a drum machine or drum she, program she so funny story I um I guess it was like six or seven years ago, we were at the BMI Awards 
you know, BMI ASCAP, they have award shows or award nights. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, I am a fan of hers. Like, <laughs> and I just went up to her and I was like, hi, I'm Jen. Uh, really like your stuff. She's like, thanks. And I just st stood there and smiled at her and didn't leave. And I was like, oh shit, I got to stop like being awkward. But like, I'm a fan of her stuff, yeah. you know, which is really cool because, and I think I still, I'm trying not to be awkward and like a weirdo when it comes to meeting people. But anytime I meet like mixers and I'm like really big fans of, I, I'm like excited to talk to them and I don't know. More than artists, it's really weird, actually. I think because I know how important the sound design is of, like I was listening to um, the other day, uh, Children Behave, the Tiffany song. Na, 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 na. What? Oh my God, Terry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now I know. Okay, I got it. Okay. Well, anyway, it's crazy. The, in the way it sounds, and you have to listen to it. I think we're alone now. I think that's the name of it, right? Tiffany? I don't know the name of the song, but I know the song that you're talking about. I, maybe it is. I think you're, whatever. We know, we all, I know what you're, if I know, everybody else has to know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You know, these days everyone's listening to some cool stuff. That's weird. Anyway, so, so listen to this. Just listen to this. Anyway, you can't really, I guess you can't really tell through this beautiful uh, technology, but the, the depth of whatever those instruments are, I mean, obviously like drums, but I think it's a bass or a synth bass or something. It's so, it's so 3D, but it's not. And that I'm like, how the hell does this sound like this? And where, what instrument is it? What do they put it through? All of this stuff. So obviously produ produ producing now there, there's an element of mixing that goes into it. Like my reverb choices, my compressor choices, yeah, preamps, whatever. And then the instruments and all this other stuff. But like that sound quality, when I hear that, I'm just, I'm going, what did they do? Who, how did they do this? And so for the longest time, it was about, to me, it was like, how do you, you know, make a guitar sound like that? How do you make piano sound like that? And that to me was mix. So that's why I'm a weirdo with, uh, mixers. I see this question. How did you learn to mix? I'm not a mixer. I am a producer who mixes a bit, but I learned by just doing shit by myself. That's really all it is. <laughs> that's, that's a very, very valid answer. But then somebody did ask the importance of what do you, do you need to have production skills? And it sounds like for you, you're answering yes. I, you did. You are really drawing on your production skills as well. I mean, I mean, for what? Do you mean existing in my life? <laughs> <laughs> no, when in your uh, collaborations with artists, like it, it, let's say you're getting pulled in as a songwriter, how often do your production skills also come into that? Um, if I'm not producing it, I don't, I don't, I might be like, hey bro, why don't you try this snare instead? Or like, you really think that should be a guitar like that? But like, I don't need to like produce it. I'm gonna be like, you need to take out 200K right here, buddy. Like, I'm not gonna say that to him. Okay. He's like, go F yourself, you dumb hoe. <laughs> like that. Is, that literal, is that literally what was said? I mean, probably something a bit more polite, which meant the same thing. <laughs> okay. Um, but then my question, this is Terry's question, which somebody did ask earlier. I'm gonna reframe oh, Terry question. No, I'm just reframing it. But um, obviously when you, you're, you're presenting some form, maybe not, because you, you might be collaborating in the room with the, per with the artist, but let's say, you know, you are probably submitting demos at some point, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I think that's the question they're trying to get at is like, how important is the production quality via your production skills to those demos that you're submitting to artists? Well, I think it's, I think it depends on the situation. If I am presenting a demo to, here's a perfect example. Let me run through one. Do you know a girl named Taylor Jansen? She's on Glass Note. I don't, but that I'm old. Keep that in mind. 
Okay, whatever. Anyway, we met, I think she had like a free day. Somebody canceled on her and maybe, maybe she wanted, I don't know really what happened. Anyway, we got together. It was like last minute. This was a week before March 12th, which was when I went into quarantine. Yep. Um, and we met and she plays guitar and we were at my studio and I was going, going on the piano. She's on the guitar, whatever. We met on Wednesday. We wrote the song on Wednesday. I produced the demo up to, uh, and hopefully I can share this with you when it's mastered. We are in mix right now, but, and you can put it on the site and talk to Taylor. She's great. She's young. She's incredible. She's from Canada. Anyway, um, I sent the label and her team the song and they were like, great, let's mix it. And I was like, what? It's done? And they're like, yeah, we love it. And I'm like, okay. And I mean, it needed like a couple other things, but for the most part, when I'm, if I'm working with an artist that I don't think I'm making the album for, like, let's say we just do a session. I want to impress people to a point. I'm not going to go like crazy and finish it. Like that was a rare example, but I took the demo as far as I could that day, in those five hours and let the world hear it. And then we mixed it. That's, that's kind of rare. Um, but that is an example of something starting from scratch and finishing same day and then going to mix. And then there's another example where I wrote a song with Anne Marie on tour and I worked on it for the last nine months back and forth with her. Much. A lot of, yeah, like a lot of editing and a lot of her recording the vocals pre-quarantine three times, you know, like, it really just depends. But the best part about that song was she went to, to her team, obviously to me, but like to her team who helps make these decisions. I like the song, I want it on my record, we need to finish it. And it was just a guitar and a, uh, a guitar and a piano and a vocal, which obviously turned into a lot more guitars, bass, drums, synths, nine months later. Um, so to answer your question, you can, you, you can do a guitar vocal if the song's sick and the artist is into it. Um, if you're trying to get the gig as the producer, you probably should make it sound. I would either, I would either go like all the way or like 20%. I don't know. That's actually great advice. Because if it's kind of in the middle that people think, is that it? <laughs> right, and then they're like, oh my God, she sucks. Like, I can't believe she couldn't finish it. And you're like, no asshole. Like I didn't finish it because you didn't pay me. Right, right, right. That's totally. Which leads to a question that Kismet just came in right now. So it' interesting. I think for people to hear would be, you know, the finances of of songwriting. Like, how do you make sure you get paid for your time, and and how does that? That is that <laughs> is honestly, that is a great question. We don't. As a songwriter, you do not get paid for your time. You get paid on the back end, should the song come out, if it streams, it's not even streaming doesn't even pay that much. If it goes on the radio or if you get synced, those are the major forms of income for a songwriter. Um, I personally don't understand why there isn't a songwriter's union. I really don't. Like, I feel like <clears throat> it's really simple. If you're doing, if you're writing a song with an artist signed to a major label, there should be like, like musicians get a fee a day, you know, for playing. Like, I feel like writers should too. You're registered, you're, you're signed. Let's say you're, you have to be like, you're signed to a publisher. Let's just say, like you, you can't just like be like, I need to get paid. Just say like, get signed to a publisher. I don't know, 350, 500 bucks a day. So you know at least, okay, cool, because so many, I can't tell you how many songs I've written that have never, I mean, like maybe 2,000. That's definitely more than 2,000 days of time. I guess maybe I've been doing it too long. Maybe I'm not good enough. I don't really know. But like, the, writers don't get paid. We don't get paid unless you're 
on the radio, you get your your statement from BMI or ASCAP. It's tough. It's a freaking grind. It is a grind, and I'm glad that you set, pointed towards that because <laughs> pretty much all aspects of this industry are like that. Uh, same like producers too. It's really hard to kind of negotiate like points and you know your day rate and can you even get one? So it's it's probably you're probably experiencing that on the production side too a little bit. It's yeah, I mean, yeah. Charge, and when I'm at the studio, like if we're not, you know, my studio has a lot of gear and a lot of equipment, and it takes a lot to keep it up and running and obviously if the artist is on a major label, like my team will charge for the studio. Plus obviously I pay rent too, um, to the building, but, um, production fees are definitely great and they keep the lights on. Um, and points as a producer are also really great because the back end, that's a percentage of the master and that will keep the lights on they call it mailbox money. Um, but no, I mean, it's, it's really tough. Like as a writer, um, it's tough. You, you really do have to like, you have to do a lot of writing. Um, it's like a hit, a hit a year, you're good, I think. But like, it's really hard to get like Max Martin does all the hits. Like there's a lot of other people in it, but like, he kind of like, and he's amazing at it. He has this like whole infrastructure to like how it's been done for like two decades at this point. I mean, he just, he's done Ace of Base and Britney Spears. Oops, I did it again. And he just did the just Taylor Swift stuff. Not the last record, but the record before. I mean, he's a beast. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. No, you're all, all of this is on topic. So it's all, it's all wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which leads me to, uh, I think this should be, you're, you're pointing towards how many songs you've written. Um, so do you write every single day? Are you writing, a, are you pretty much writing a song every single day? No, I used to, I used to. Um, I think, especially now, I'm taking a little bit more time to just take my time and not like do the American, I have to do this right now, do everything kind of mentality. Um, but no, I, I think maybe three a week, three songs a week is kind of what I average. Um, and normally it's with an artist mm -hmm. towards their record. Sometimes I write by myself. I just haven't really, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I haven't had the time. I still am doing stuff. Um, I don't know. Well, I, I think producing too, so that's a different, you know. A different thing. I just wanted you to say that because I think my experience when people are starting out, um, the problem is they get very precious about one or two songs and so they're not pumping out enough to be like getting really good at their craft. So they get like, oh, I've got six songs. And it's like, no, nope, you probably need, you know, a hundred. <laughs> so like, don't get so, pre don't get so fixated on like making one song perfection because you never know who's going to connect to those songs anyway so it's that's what's interesting is I think you need to hear like how just how many of those how many songs you're pumping out I definitely think if I hadn't pumped out hundreds I wouldn't be like it's kind I know this is going to sound ridiculous but the more you write the better you get the more you work out the stronger you get the more you cook the better sh of a chef you become hopefully <laughs> But like, it's kind of the same thing. Like there's this like, and this is just my experience, but it's like, I almost like I'm aware, like when we're in the room and we're writing songs, it's like, I'm aware of when the feeling that comes into my body where I'm like, oh, that was really good. Oh my God, oh, remember what they just said. Oh my God, that, those words, my mind's kind of going like this. It's like catching these nuggets of gold and, or these beautiful, these beautiful sparks and reminding the artist because it's just like it, it always it always comes from them to me it always comes from like I even think about it like with with Beth and stuff like 
there's this one song we did called Fire. And I remember she was in the booth and she sang the wrong note. And I was like, but it was, but it worked on the scale. It was almost like it went, uh, it became a chromatic scale. Like we added a whatever. I don't see this. Is, I don't even know the correct terminology, but I remember going like, oh, that's, that's the, the lyric. That's the, that's the melody. And she's like, well, I don't like the lyric that I said. It literally like came out of her mouth. Like bless my, bless my soul. Like, like hell it is. That's the way it is or something like that. I can't resist was the last lyric. And I was like, I, I think it's good. She goes, well, I think we should change it. I said, well, to what? She goes, I don't know. I said, it kind of just feels fine. It's right. I think it's right. And she goes, all right. <laughs> but like it, you know, I, I can't tell you why she got in the booth and why those words came out of her mouth. And I can't tell you why she felt, I think she felt uncomfortable about it because she didn't think about it. And she's, I, you want to know who you need to interview is Beth. That girl is the most, she's the funniest, most incredible epitome of punk. Like she is a punk queen. Um, but it's like the, it's trusting yourself. I think when you're creating to go, I made a mistake and then going, having somebody in the room tell you that was good or what about what you just said there? I think that's the way to go. Um, I don't know. I think that's the, the beauty is the mistakes and following the feelings. I feel like, yeah. I don't know. That's well, that's true. I think the happy accidents, mistakes, those are the, so I, what I'd like to dig in on a little bit is that um, there's that trust that you have to build up in order for, you know, you and the artist to, allow the artist to do these spontaneous things and for them to trust you to say, I think that's right. Like, how do you, cause somebody's asking about collaborating and I'm just kind of short, fast tracking it to it's the trust part. How do you build that trust with the artist or the person you're people you're collaborating with? Um, I don't know. I think it just kind of like, I think you have to be aligned with your tastes. And I think you have to be aligned with being, um, I don't know, I don't know. You know, I send her a demo and she goes, this is great. And then she all of a sudden she goes, I like where her instincts went. I mean, it's funny because I don't really know, at the end of the day, like perfect example, working on this Cherry Glazer song. I got sent, they started it, they sent it to me and they're like, we need you to produce, produce it. I just, I didn't even, I realize now, because this time has been a weird time, right? Everyone's going through weird stuff. There are days when I, when you feel fine and there are days when you're just like, this is the worst thing ever. The hell's going on, blah, blah, blah. I didn't even ask the band what they wanted me to do. I've, I never do that. I normally have a conversation. I just was like, okay, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I sent it back to them and they wrote, they wrote to me, they were like, oh my God, we love, we love your instincts. And I went, oh, thank God. Like, I didn't, I didn't even think that they wouldn't. Cause I was like, well, I'm just going to, obviously if somebody's asking me to do something, I'm just going to do it. So the question you asked was to remind it to me, cause there's a reason I'm asking. What I will trust with the artist. Right. That's how, by you just go, this is what I'm going to do. And they go, we love it. Or I send it back to them and they go, mm -hmm, ignore. And then they don't trust me and they don't talk to me. But I think, you know, you, you meet somebody, you know, back in the day, you met somebody at a bar, a guy asked for your number. If, if you're into guys or a girl or whatever, they ask for your number. So you give them your number. You think they're going to call you. If they don't call you, you don't trust them. Why they ask for your number? It's, it's as simple as that. It's as simple as I'm going to do this and I'm going to make this song sound like this, or we're in a room and I'm writing and somebody likes the melodies and then you establish that. And then you're not a dickhead and you don't like do some douchebag shit and you just like follow through on your word and like you support the artists and support their vision. And that's how you build trust. I don't know. No, I think, well, okay. From, let me just 
kind of backtrack on just you and I, like, how come I trust you to do that? It's a great question. I don't know. I ask myself that. Why? So I think you're undervaluing some of the smaller things, which is, uh, I send you an email, you call me back right away. You follow, uh, like, I ask you a question, you answer the question. You know what I mean? That's right. how we build trust and like, I email you back. So, you know, or I call you back. Like, we never leave each other hanging. Like, I don't think, oh, shit, is Jen going to show up for this? Like, I know you're going to show up for it. Like, because you communicate with me and I know, like, these things are going to happen. But that's, people undervalue that just, you know, human interaction and clear communication as how you gain trust like that and you're saying that with the artist like oh, okay i listened to what they said they said i really like this so then you like really dig down on what they just said and and so i think people under i'm just saying that but that's yeah you're totally right i mean i think it's it's crazy because what you're saying about communication to me i expect people i want people to be direct and I'm from New Jersey, East Coast, ride or die, right? So if you want somebody, no offense to the whole California state, which is now my home, but like, I expect people to communicate. I expect if I make a reservation at a restaurant that they're going to seat me. I'm not going to restaurants. <laughs> Someday. Yeah. You expect there's a certain flow in the music business. And this is something that like, I hate I hate it. I want, if you say you're going to show up at one, show up at one. Don't come at three and then be like, oh, sorry, it's so busy. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. And that's probably my finance side, which by the way, we all know that in music, you have to be chill. So like, you don't want to cause a, uh, you want to cause a fuss, but it's annoying. It's annoying for people to be at late. It's annoying for people to not email you back. And we have to allow artists to beat to their own drum and come when they want to come and a and r's to not hit you back and people to not pay you because they're disrespectful assholes but like you choose how you want to be as a person you want to be a dickhead go live over there i don't live in the dickhead land you want to do business like that i'm not going to call you again i'm just not i don't care i really don't care now well, it's also the, like, I agree with you, like, um, it seems like communication seems like, a, like, duh, of course, people communicate, but I think the vast majority is, uh, the vast majority are not communicating, and that's why you're successful, right? It's like, there's, it's, what seems like a simple thing, communicating isn't really that simple, and um, I think people are undervaluing it. So that's my outside perspective on that. Um, I don't know if I, I think I have time for one more question, Christina, is this true? Last question, she says. Okay, I'm going to end with something positive, which is, yes, your favorite, what's your favorite thing about writing songs? What's, what is it? Maybe that's not positive, but <laughs> seems positive to me. No, it's, um, you know, for me, it's just, I love, it's such a, it's such a, it's such a, what's the word? Um, it's a question that I believe is on the surface easy to answer, but I think why I like writing songs is because selfishly and personally um couldn't be more in the moment and I love the feeling that I have when I'm creating something I love the therapy that it gives me if you will uh and it's 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 the emotion that you want to elicit you know it's fun it's a party it's sad it's anything and I think it's so cool that we can express ourselves through art, through words and melody. It's the most beautiful thing. And needed now, I think, more than ever, personally. Absolutely. That's a brilliant 
answer. And now I'm going to end actually with one more question that just popped in because I'm trying to get them all in. Uh, and you can, you can answer one or many, but uh, who are your, who are the favorite people to collaborate with? Which artists? Oh man, that's such a, that's okay. a tough question. Okay. But I, hmm? You don't have to answer it. You can say, I love them all. I don't. <laughs> I just can't say which ones I don't, I don't love. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I mean, I really look, I don't know. I feel like I've developed friendships with a lot of them and they're weird friendships. Some of them are quirky friendships and like not the way I would normally like talk to my friends from Jersey that are just like hitting, we're hitting up the bars from 10 PM to 2 AM on a Tuesday because we feel like it, but I don't know. They're, they're all really special in how, and how they create music. And I think the ones that I've become friends with are my favorite ones to hang out with. So. That's a fair answer because now I have to ask another last question. Who is your favorite brother? Oh, wow. Who, who asked that? I need to know who asked that question. Who asked it? In the chat. I'm gonna look. It's either Tim, Al, Barber, or Alan. Who asked it? it As Alex. My dickhead little brother. Everyone, everyone, clap for Alex. He's a doctor. He's at Saint Saint Joe's Hospital in Patterson. He's on the front line. So, Alex, we're clapping for you. And he's he's young and. Um, He's not single, but he's very attractive and fit and smart, and I love him. <laughs> I love that he popped in there. That's so funny. I can't, where is he? Like, what is he doing? I can't believe, he, he had a 24-hour shift yesterday. Alex, send me the Adidas codes at North Face. Send it to me. Sorry. I think he just, pop, he's not popping back on, but... Um... We're done. Well, I want to, so everyone is saying this, but I want to personally thank you for taking the time because I know you are, you have things on your plate right now that are causing you stress. So I want you to go do those. Not really, Terry. I'm not, if I really think about it, I don't care. I okay, just if you don't care then, but you know, I want you to do your thing. Everyone's saying thank you. Give thank everyone you. a clap on the, I'm going to give you a, a reaction here. There we go. Um, but I so appreciate it. I'm glad that I got to see your face in the quarantine and, um, anything else you'd like, to, any parting words you'd like to part with or say, whatever. Um, get lost in the moments you have right now, create music, dare to suck. <laughs>